Hello and welcome to more Pokemon! Last time we had quite the crazy episode. It took a long time to record, a long time to make, and I needed a little bit of a break after it, but we are back and ready to go. So, let's go, Eevee. We've got a new city to explore. I can't believe we've already got 43 Pokemon, but let's go and continue our adventure here. And we are exactly where we left off, here on Route 4, just outside of Mount Moon. We can go talk to our new Paris, our shiny Paris Aya. And they seem jealous of Freya, I guess because Freya gets to ride on my head. But we'll give them some attention. Oh, there we go, dude. And they look very pleased, awesome. So one thing we gotta keep in mind is our Pokemon are still poisoned. That kind of happened in the last episode. I want to continue, guys, but there is one thing I want to go do real quick, which is I want to go back into Mount Moon. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I do want to go catch a Geodude. And this will not make a lot of sense for a while, but in a future episode, why I'm catching this Geodude will make sense. So let me go see if I can find one. Oh gosh, I'm just getting flashbacks to all my time here. But we found the Geodude, so let me go catch this Crutter. Oh my gosh, don't be breaking out of my Pokeballs, dude. Okay, I've got plenty of raspberries. I'll go use one of those. Maybe that'll help out. There we go. We got ourselves another Geo dude. And just for catching that, we almost got Aya up to level 9. I'm going to be trying to use Aya a lot today to try to get them some extra levels, but let's go ahead and get back out of Mount Moon first. Ah, <sighs> there we go. Fresh air once again. And last, the last thing I want to do before we actually move on is, I should have done this a while ago, let's go and teach Headbutt to Aya instead of just having them no scratch. Headbutt is a lot stronger, and there is no reason I shouldn't have taught this sooner. So we'll go ahead and get rid of Scratch, and we'll go learn Headbutt instead. There we go. So let's go and actually move on with our adventure. So we're here on a brand new route. Actually, technically this is still Route 4. Um, the section right before Mount Moon was also Route 4. This part is considered Route 4, so it's not technically a new route, but it's new to us still, so that's fine. So we got an item back there. We'll get another item here as well. And there's a couple of hidden items in this area, so I want to make sure I don't miss them. I know one of them sneaking inside one of these bushes. Oh, looks like I have found something. Let's go talk to him here. Probably just a berry. And yep, it's a Nana berry. Okay. So that's cool, but I think there's something even better hidden in a bush up here. Down here we do have an item though, which is going to be a repel. So I guess we'll go ahead and get that. And now what I want to do is go up here. This is where the good stuff is. So right inside this bush, we actually get a PP up. So you know how each attack has a certain number of PP, which is a certain number of times you can actually use it? If you use the PP up, then you can raise that number to a higher amount. But you might notice right here, there's a ledge. We cannot go up that ledge. So this item that's right here, we cannot get this. And we can't get this basically until the end of the game. It's going to be a very long time. Okay, technically you could get it halfway through the game, but... We're splitting hairs at this point. So let's go and move on. Now down here, this is very important. This ledge right here is one way. Once we jump down this ledge, we cannot go back for a long time. And that is why I wanted to go get Geodude now, because he'll be useful for a bit later. And we can't go back to him now that we are down this ledge. So a new patch of grass. There's actually a couple of Pokemon that I would like to catch here. So let's see if I can find him. Now the first one, I actually want to catch a Rattata, because I evolved my Rattata into Eradicate. And uh, I was not expecting that to happen so early, but we do want just a plain Rattata, and once we get to the next city, you'll see why. So let's go ahead and try to catch this Crutter. And there we go, we got him on our first try. And there we go, Aya is level 9. And for getting to level 9, they'll learn a very good attack, which is Absorb. Absorb is a grass-type attack, and it, does, it has 40 power. And the thing that's good about it is it will actually heal us for half the damage it does. So, I want to go ahead and get rid of a move, and unfortunately we are going to get rid of Sleep Powder. So, let's go ahead and do that. Now, there is one more Pokemon I want to find here, and it's not Spearow, it's not Ekans, it actually is a new Pokemon. So, let's wait around and see if we can find it. The thing that's really cool about the Pokemon we're about to find is that it is a Water-type Pokemon. Now, at this point in the game, you could have only gotten one Water-type Pokemon, which is Magikarp. And unless you're crazy like me and you leveled it up a bunch, Magikarp itself is useless. If you get it to Gyarados, it's very handy. But Magikarp himself is pretty bad, so this is kind of the first useful water Pokemon you could find in the game. But it is a little bit uncommon, so we'll have to wait around to see if it'll show up. And I should add that right here you can find Charmander as well, so if you didn't get him before Mount Moon, you can still get him right here, but that's not what I'm looking for. Where is this Crutter? I guess in the meantime we can nickname some Pokemon. So Geodude can be Crinklebop, and my second Rattata can be Fart. Wait. What? That name contains a word you can't use. I can't say fart? Okay, I can't say fart, but fart poop, that's all right. Well, this game is just confusing. I really hope I don't get banned for calling my Pokemon fart poop. Okay, game, this is just getting ridiculous at this point. I've been here for over 10 minutes. This is not even a rare Pokemon. It's got a one in 20 chance to appear. There it is, all right. So here is our new Pokemon. 
the really goofy looking Pokemon, Psyduck. So let's see if we can catch this guy. I've got 21 Pokeballs and eight Great Balls. I'm sure we'll be fine. Plenty of berries as well. It's still a yellow, even with the raspberry. Let's see if we can get that excellent. I missed, I was like just barely to the left. So we got the berry, but not any kind of good catch combo or any kind of uh, good throw there. But we'll try again. Let's go for another raspberry. Let's see if I can actually hit the circle this time. And oh my gosh, why'd you got a taunt right then? Let's try it third time. Okay, we got the great, not an excellent, but I still have that berry. This should be good, right? This should be good, right, game? Okay, it is. We got him. Well, that took me like 15 minutes to find, which it definitely shouldn't, but oh well, we got him. So that's gonna be level 17 for Freya, and Aya's getting very close to, to uh, 10 right there. And Freya wants to learn Bite. Now, the thing about Bite, it is a dark type attack. The thing about it, though, is that Eevee is about to learn some incredibly good moves, and basically I will never use Bite ever. Like, I'll get it and I'll get rid of it in like five minutes, so we're just gonna avoid it here. But here is the new Pokedex data. Always tormented by headaches, it uses psychic powers, but whether it intends to do so is not known. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. I'm gonna name it Psyduck. With that out of the way, that is all there is to catch there, so let's move on. And we'll go grab this item, which is going to be three Great Balls. And now let's finally get to the next main city. And this one is going to be... Cerulean City. And of course, Cerulean being a shade of blue, the city's gonna be a very blue place. A mysterious blue aura surrounds it. So what do you say we get to exploring? Let's go talk to some people. You're making some sort of encyclopedia of Pokemon. That sounds like a fun time. It definitely has been. We're almost a third of the way done already. You know the guy who lives in that house there? He's collecting bikes from all over the world. And of course, this is home of the bike maniac. So let's go inside. There's something special that we can get inside this place. So let's go talk to a couple people. I like riding on Pokemon, sure, but riding on a bike is pretty cool too. I guess we'll go talk to this girl. It was cool getting to see all his rare bikes, but boy, that bike maniac goes on and on and on. So back in the original Pokemon games, you could actually get a bike voucher later in the game. You could bring it back and then you get a bicycle to ride. You could not get that in this game because you can just ride Pokemon instead of riding a bike. So this guy, he'll just start blabbering about all of his bike stuff right here. Now it scrolls automatically. I cannot make it go any slower. If anyone wants to take the challenge on of writing up what he's saying in a comment, that'd be awesome. Cause like, I just can't keep up with what he's saying right here. But if we go and check the green bike out, we check out this red bike as well. And then we go check out the blue bikes. If we check out all three types, we actually will get something special. So I do want to go and ask him about these three types of bikes. So there's the final one. And with that, we're the first person who's listened to all his nerdy talk. You must be a nerd too. As a token of our new friendship, please take this. And we get five heart scales. Now these are something you're going to want to hold on to. They're not really useful now, but much later in the game. If a Pokemon unlearns an attack, say like how I just got rid of uh, Sleep Powder on Paris, much later in the game, we'll be able to use those heart scales to relearn that sleep powder. And here, Freya is going crazy over this fountain, so let's go check it out. Now, if we go talk to this fountain... Oh, I guess Aya likes it too. Let's talk to them. Get those sparkles, man. Let's see what they say. They seem pleased looking at the fountain. Okay. Anyways, we go talk to the fountain, and we can throw some money in. Now, this is something you can only do once. I'll go ahead and throw in 500 Poké Dollars. And basically what this will do is it'll splash splash, we throw some money in, and it'll make Freya very, very happy. So that will increase their happiness. And happiness is something I'll talk more in depth about later, but it basically can have some beneficial effects in battle by having a higher happiness. Now, the thing that's confusing about this fountain is you can only do it once as far as I can tell. And I don't actually know how much happiness you gain from doing 500 or what you would gain from doing 50. So I just go for the 500 just in case, but I don't know how the could I would test what that actually does. My dearest Clefairy's head, I was messing with its fur and it got really fluffy and cool, but it got back to normal when I kept messing with it. Yep, consider this some foreshadowing. In the next episode, we'll show off what he is actually talking about there. But for now, let's get out of this little house and let's keep exploring Cerulean City. Now, of course, Cerulean City being a main city for the game is going to have a new Pokemon gym but we'll get to that later. For now, let's go inside the Pokemart because as we saw from the Mount Moon episode, we've got a lot of stuff I can sell for some money. Have you ever seen a rare candy? I've never found one at a shop. Yeah, typically, actually, I think always. I don't think rare candy is ever for sale. You can only find them. Once you defeat a gym leader and got a new badge, you should visit the local shop. 
Yeah, it's pretty much true. Whenever you beat a new gym, you will get new items at the shop. I don't really want to buy anything right now. I mean, we could buy some stuff, but I just want to go and sell a lot of things. So right now, we've got 11,000 Poké Dollars. Let's go sell off this pretty wing. We'll get 500. We've got seven tiny mushrooms, thanks to Paris. We'll sell all those for 1750. I'm not going to sell those heart skills, because those will be handy later. We'll sell that big pearl. I think we got that one from dealing with... Uh, with Slowpoke back in Pewter. We got four big mushrooms. A lot of those are thanks to uh, Aya as well. Got two Stardust. Those are worth 1,500 uh, 1, each. Let's see. We'll sell the Nugget. That's worth 5,000. And we'll sell the regular Pearl. And this one is worth 1,000. So there you go. We just made 25,000 Poke Dollars. Just like that. But as we scroll down here, you'll see I have an enormous amount of Paris candy and an enormous amount of Mighty candy. So I think it's about time we talk about what these candies actually do. So we have all these candies. There's different types. We've got the health candy. We've got the quick candy, tough candy, mighty candy. Basically, for each of the six main stats, there is a corresponding candy. Now, you see we have mighty candy right here, and it says increase attack by one. And under the Pokemon, it says needs one. That means we have to use one mighty candy to increase their attack by one. As you give them more and more candy, that number will go up. Suddenly, it'll be needing 10, 15, a lot of candies to raise the stat by one. Now, each Pokemon in the game also also has a species specific candy. Here we've got Paris candy and only Paris and their evolved form can use it, but increases all stats by one. Now there is a limit to this. These stats you gain from candy are kind of their own separate thing. And I like to call them bonus stats. You can have up to 200 in each stat as a bonus. So I can have plus 200 HP, an extra 200 attack and so on. And I can get there by using candy. But there's a bit of a caveat. You notice how there's a mighty candy L and a mighty candy XL. Well, the regular Mighty Candy can only get you the first 50 bonus stats. The extra 150 you cannot get by the regular candy. The Candy L, you can see at the bottom it says we have to get up to level 30 or higher to use it. And with the Candy L, you can get up to the first 100 bonus stats, but you cannot get the second 100, so you can only get those first 100. Now, Mighty Candy XL, you can see we have to get a Pokemon to level 60 or higher. Mighty Candy XL can bring you all the way up to 200. And once again, the species candy is special because the species candy can go all the way up to 200 on its own and it's all stats. So 200 species specific candy, 200 Paris candy would give me all of the bonus stats I can possibly get by themselves. And that is basically how bonus stats work. But there is one more note, which is whenever your Pokemon levels up, they'll gain one bonus stat in a random stat. So when you level up, you might see this little gold plus one. That is a bonus stat. Whether you get it from leveling up or you get it from candies, you can only get plus 200 in each of the stats. But just keep this in mind. You might not actually need 200 candy because you might have already gotten some bonus stats from leveling up. So just keep that in mind. Now, if I were to go and use all these candies, I would be ridiculously overpowered. So I've decided, guys, for the purpose of this walkthrough, I will not be using any candies that I've gotten from catch combos because that is the main way you get candy is by catch combos. The only candies I will use are candies that I get from, well, random item pickups on the ground, stuff like that. Sometimes trainers will give you uh, candy, sometimes you'll find them on the field. I will use those candies, I will not use any from catch combos. I guess let's heal up and get this poison off of us. And I think we should talk about the big elephant in the room, the fact that I have like 250 extra Paris, because this is another way you get most of your candies. So basically you have an option down here to send to Professor, and if I send a bunch of Pokemon, you can see we can send up to 30 at a time. Then when we do that, they will give us candy as a reward. Now the type of candy that you get is based on which Pokemon you send. So if we send off a bunch of Paris, you'll see that Paris will reward me with Mighty Candy. So I've already got a bunch of Mighty Candy, but there you go, you get Mighty Candy. And yeah, depending on which Pokemon you send, you will get different candies, but I guess I could send these Spearow. And Spearow gives us quick candy, as you can see. And that's really all there is to it. You can send Pokemon to Professor Oak to get candies. You can go and do a catch combo to get candies, and you can use those to raise your Pokemon stats. I would recommend you guys just go ahead and boost your Pokemon stats, unless you're trying to make the game challenging, then I would just do that, but I don't want to just totally overpower my Paris or anything like that right now, so I won't be using any of them. Okay, with that big talking point out of the way, there's a few interesting things we can do here in the Pokemon Center. First off, this guy with the lollipop, he talks about being able to teach our Eevee a marvelous move, and we can choose from three different moves, and they're all amazing. So we're gonna get all of them. First off, we have Bouncy Bubble. So let's go to Eevee, and I'll just go ahead and get rid of Sand Attack here. Basically, I'm going to keep Headbutt. I will get rid of the rest of the attacks. So let's see what Bouncy Bubble does. Actually, let's get all three of the attacks first, and then we'll go and see what they actually do. So next up is Buzzy Buzz. 
Let's get that in place of Double Kick. And let's get Sizzly Slide as our last attack right here. Now, if you get here on Let's Go Pikachu, Pikachu can only learn one Marvelous move. So Eevee has a huge advantage over Pikachu right here. You get three different Marvelous moves and they're all very good. Okay, so let's go check what these moves actually do. So first off, Bouncy Bubble 90 power. And it's basically like Paris's Absorb. It'll absorb and it'll heal half the damage taken by the target. So basically Absorb, but way more powerful. We also have Buzzy Buzz, 90 power once again, and it will paralyze the opponent. Very good. We also get Sizzly Slide, 90 power, and it will leave them with a burn. Now, one thing about Sizzly Slide, it is also a physical attack, which my EV is a little bit better at physical attacks than it is at special attacks. So Sizzly Slide is a little bit more powerful for me than the others. But yeah, basically this is absolutely ridiculous and the partner Pokemon in this game is very, very strong. Now there's another thing we could do inside the Pokemon Center. Hi, do you want to trade your Rattata for my Rattata? Now this sounds really stupid, but let's go ahead and do it. So you can see right there, their Rattata looks a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and send them Fart Poop offer that as a trade, and we'll go and trade Pokemon. Oh, I'm so happy, let's get started. And I guess take a look at this amazing transfer animation, it's really cool. And there it is! They sent over their Rattata, which I know I pronounced wrong, but I'm just gonna keep saying it like that. Now this one, you can see right there, it says Alola Form, and it is not just a normal type, it is a dark and normal type, so it's a little bit different. Now in Pokémon Sun and Moon, they introduced what is called an Alola Form from, well, the Alola region, which is what Pokémon Sun and Moon was. So they're basically alternate forms of the same Pokémon, and they usually have different types as well. So throughout the game, we're going to be seeing a lot of those Alola forms, and that is why I went back to catch that Geodude, because later on, someone's going to want to trade my regular Geodude for the Alola Geodude. So that's why I got that Geodude there. There's a book called Pokemon Journal Interviews. Will you read it? I guess? Future Activities of Pokemon Fanatic Bill. Well, I'm researching about how to become a Pokemon. It's just a joke. Don't take it seriously. Actually, I'm doing research on understanding the minds of Pokemon. I want to understand what they are thinking. Okay, well, that was a very eventful Pokemon Center trip, but we are done with that one, so let's go move on. We're almost completely done exploring Cerulean City. As you can see, there's the gym right there. I'll be doing the gym in the next episode, because there's a lot more to do, and I definitely want to make sure that I level up my uh, Paris, my Aya, before I actually get that far. But inside here, there's a Bulbasaur, and let's go talk to this girl here. I'm taking care of injured Pokemon here. Bulbasaur is fully recovered, so I'd like to give this Pokemon to a trainer who's caught a lot of Pokemon and I can trust. And she'll see that we've caught a lot of Pokemon. We've caught 298. Would you like to take care of this Bulbasaur? I guess we'll go ahead and say yes. Now, to get this Bulbasaur, you have to have caught at least 30 Pokemon, which is pretty easy to have at this point in the game. So there you go, we get a Bulbasaur. Now we've already got a Bulbasaur, or a Venusaur, and his name is Barbell Soar. This one we're not going to evolve, so we're gonna go and change that name, and we're gonna change it not to Barbell Soar, but to Barbell Snore. So there you go. If you missed it in Viridian Forest, you can just get a freebie Bulbasaur right there. Or if you just want a second one, there you go. Or if you just decided to not go through the crazy catch combo stuff to get the other Bulbasaur, this one's a lot easier to get. So we're done with that. Let's move on. Just a couple more houses to check out up here. So let's go inside this one. Now this one is special because it actually has an exit out the back. And if we go right through here, well, first off, we get a, a nice view of the water. It's beautiful, but we can get an item, a rare candy. So I could use that to level some stuff up. Uh, I thought about using that to level up Aya, but I think that through all the stuff we're going to be battling with Aya, that it'll be enough. Now this guy is special because he talks about gym badges. So if we go talk to him, we can say yes to uh, getting more info about badges. And we can actually get a description about all of the badges in the game. Now, if you're interested in this, I'm gonna go ahead and go through it, but if you're not interested, go ahead and skip ahead to this part in the video here. So, let's get started. Number one is the Boulder Badge. It proves a person has defeated the Pewter City Gym Leader. The creator of the badge clearly put some effort into it. It's rough and hard, just like Rock-type Pokemon. Okay, that's it for the Boulder Badge. Next is the Cascade Badge. This is the one we're gonna be trying to get from here. It proves a person defeated the Cerulean City Gym Leader. If you look at it, you'll see its elegant shape. It was made to look just like a, dro a water drop. Watch out for the pointy end though, it's a bit sharp! Yes, we need to have safety warnings for our gym badges. I'm gonna be a Pokemon Master. I think I can at least figure out not to touch pointy things. So Vermilion, you may have never heard the word before, but Vermilion is actually the name of a color. It's a reddish-orange, although for some reason the badge itself doesn't have this color. 
Yep, almost everything in this game is named after colors. So that was the Thunder Badge. Next up is the Rainbow Badge. It proves a person defeated the Celadon City Gym Leader. This is the most colorful of all the badges here in the Kanto region, and it's also the most expensive to make. If you put it on the ground and spin it like a top, it's very pretty. Next up is the Soul Badge. It proves a person defeated the Fuchsia City Gym Leader. It has been ranked as the best badge to give an, as an engagement gift two years straight. I'm guessing that's because it's shaped like a heart and is such a pretty pink color. Next up is the Marsh Badge. It proves the person defeated the Saffron City Gym Leader. You know, trainers still debate whether it's actually made out of real gold or not. Probably not. Okay, second to last one is the Volcano Badge. And this one proves you defeated the Cinnabar Island Gym Leader. This badge is actually made from rock that was formed from the lava from the volcano in Cinnabar. The gym leader was very particular about that. And the final one is the Earth Badge, so let's go check that one out. And it proves you defeated the Viridian City Gym Leader, the gym we saw really early on in the game. I've heard this is the most difficult to obtain of all the eight badges. There you go. And there's one more thing we can ask him about, which is simply the number of badges. So if we choose that, he says, Strong Pokemon from other trainers will listen to you if you have enough badges. The level limit increases by 10 levels for each badge you have. If you have one badge, Pokemon up to level 20 will listen to you. If you have two badges, Pokemon up to 30 will listen to you, and so on. Once you have all the badges, Pokemon of any level will give you their full attention. All right then. Okay, let's go get out of here. We're done with that guy. And there's one little house to check out and then we're actually gonna get to some Pokemon battles and see how Aya does. But first, yeah, let's go check this little crud out. Oh my gosh, there's an Onyx in your house. Jam Jam. Why the crud would Onyx say Jam? I was stopped when I tried to enter a Pokemon with my dear Onixie. That was utterly unnecessary. My Onixie is such a good boy that it goes into its Pokeball in a tight space even without being asked. Okay. Kind of makes me want to name my Onyx Onyxia. But yeah, we are done there. So let's go and move on, guys. We've got Aya up front. And let's go get into a battle. Let's go up this way. Oh, I guess Aya saw something. But suddenly, Yarg! And he's living up to his name, guys. Yarg! Oh, Psycho, you've got a... You're not going to believe this. Uh, p -p pokemon <laughs> Okay. Why? I don't see how that leads into us having a battle. But yes, we are suddenly going to be battling Pokemon Trainer Yarg. He's got three Pokemon, and the first one is going to be Pidgey, which means we do not want to have Aya out there, so we're going to instantly swap over to Freya. You're going to see me do this quite a bit, because I want to get that little bit of experience by having Aya participate, but at the same time, if they're weak to something like flying, which a flying-type attack would totally destroy us, I'm just going to get them out of there. So we'll go right over to Freya. Now, Freya is going to be very good against this because... Well, one, because they're level 17 at this point, but also because we now have a electric-type attack, Buzzy Buzz, so this will be super effective, and it's already a very powerful attack, so that will take down Pidgey in one attack right there. So, down goes Pidgey. Let's go see what their second Pokemon is, and we'll see if Aya can actually deal with that one. And their next Pokemon is going to be Oddish. This is another Pokemon that I really don't think that Aya... Th they could deal with it, but it would not be ideal, because if they use a Poison-type attack on me, it's gonna hurt. So we'll swap them out, and let's go right back to Freya once again. Now, thankfully for Freya, not only did they learn a Electric-type attack, we also learned Fire, which will be very good against Oddish. So basically, Freya's just learning all the good stuff. Yeah, let's go do some Sizzly Slide. That should one-shot, and if it doesn't, they'll get burned. No, that just completely annihilated them. So there you go. So as you saw that Oddish did use Acid, that would have hurt pretty bad on Aya. But, there is one Pokemon left, and it's going to, of course, be that Pikachu. And I'm going to try and have Aya take this one down. Aya just got level 10, so that's going to help out a bit. But they're still going to be lower level than Pikachu. So we will see how we do here. Alright, we're shiny, we're sparkly, out comes Pikachu. And here is my basic plan. I'm going to go ahead and hit them with a Poison Powder. So that'll slowly chip away at them. Oh, they're going to go for Double Team, so that'll increase my chance to miss. Can I please get them? If we get the poison on them... Ah, oh, dang it. It's not as big a deal if we actually get the poison, but oh well. They're going for another double team. At this point, I really want to make sure I get this poison on there. Come on, get the poison. Oh, we missed a second time. This might be bad, guys. Let's try again. They go for quick attack this time. This is not going to be easy, but we got that one poison powder, so there we go. So with that, I'm now going to start doing Absorb, because... Basically, the plan is to let Absorb heal me a little bit by little bit, while at the same time, the poison is slowly chipping away at them. The problem is that with those two double teams, it might be kind of hard to hit the guy, and his quick attack is doing 8 damage each time, or a little bit less that time. But hey, we got the Absorb, so there we go. We'll heal up a little bit of that damage, and basically, we're doing a slow and steady tactic right here. Poison plus Absorb is a pretty good tactic, so we'll see if it works out. 
He's got a three level advantage on me. And of course, quick attack will always make him go first. And he avoids, so that's not good. We're not going to get the heal from Absorb that time. I'm gonna go do another Absorb. If I miss again, I'm gonna have to go and use a potion. But you gotta do what you gotta do. We're almost dead, down to just three HP, but we do get the Absorb. So that's gonna put us back up to, let's see, back up to seven. I think we might still need to use a potion. I hate to do it, but I think we're gonna go for it. We might survive with one HP, but I'm not gonna risk it here. So yeah, we'll, we'll be a little cheap. Did he just use a potion as well? Oh my gosh, so I guess Yarg and I are doing the same thing. We're both using a potion, so we're just both cheesy item spammers. There you go. But he's still poisoned, so he gets hurt by the poison once again. And I'm going to go back to my strategy of just spamming absorb. Oh my gosh, he got a critical hit and I missed. So if he gets another critical, I'm going to have to heal again. I'm hoping he does not have a second potion. There's quick attack. Oh, it did seven damage. Yep, so he can do seven. So that's not good, but we got the absorb that time, so we can survive another turn, no problem. If we hit him again, I think we win. So come on, just hit this absorb. Goes for quick attack, no critical, come on. Oh, down to four, we missed, no! Dang it, man, that means we have to heal again. I know, this is the most exciting battle, me sitting here having to heal a bunch of times, but... Well, those two double teams really ruined things for me. Okay, so they go for a quick attack once again, and... Oh, I thought that was a critical for a second. Does it go down? Oh, there we go, we got him. I was really not wanting to have to use potions on that battle, but the double team just made it not possible. Without the double teams, we could have won that without using potions, but yeah, well, we got him anyways. Aya wins their first real battle. Ha, deep breaths. Well, not their first real battle, but anyways. Okay, let me try that again. Sorry, it's not like me to lose my cool like that. Yarg, you are never cool, dude. There's a house up ahead where this famous Pokemon fanatic is supposed to live. I wanted to stop by because I thought maybe I'd get to see some rare Pokemon or something. But what I found, and don't freak out when you hear this, uh, that Pokemon fanatic wasn't there. Instead, there was a Pokemon that talked. Yeesh, just thinking about it gives me the creeps. Don't go in there, psycho. And I guess we'll go and shake the thing right here because Freya wants to talk to us. Oh, they're pumped up, dude. I guess because we just won that battle. So let's go give them a little... Oh, they don't like that. They don't like that. I'm trying to give you a good pet, not the bad touch. I'm trying... I'm trying to give you the good pets. Come on. There we go. Okay. And they love it. Aya is happily staring at the swaying flowers. They are beautiful, aren't they? So let's go back and heal real quick, and then we've got more trainers to fight. And it's going to be mostly Aya. We'll do a little bit more swap training, but... Basically, the rest of the trainers today, I'm going to try to let Aya do most of it. So, let's go down the bridge. This is Route 24, and let's go talk to the first kid here. People call this the Nugget Bridge. Beat us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Think you got what it takes? I think I do. So, let's go and see if we can beat up this kid. Now, he's only going to have one Pokemon. Bugcatcher Kale. One Pokemon there. Like, this guy is basically a salad, Kale. But he's got a Venonat. This is a Pokemon we have not yet seen, but it is a bug poison. I think Aya probably could deal with it, but you know what? Well, let's try. Well, let's just try. If we got to go back and heal, that's fine. I'll go ahead and get a Stun Spore, and then we can do some Headbutt. Goes for Supersonic, which would confuse us, but we'll get that Stun Spore. So the, I, the reason I want to do Stun Spore is it will paralyze, which will make them slower. And if they're slower, we get to go first. Headbutt has a chance to flinch if we go first, so it combos very, very nicely. So basically we have a chance to flinch and they have a chance to get stuck in paralysis. So this is pretty awesome. I think it's going to take two more headbutts to actually defeat the guy though. Oh, but they get through with supersonic. That is not good. So we might hurt ourselves in confusion. Let's see if we can get through that confusion. If we can, we're, we're just good to go. Come on, get through. And we hurt ourselves. Of course we do. And they go for tackle as well. That is, that is unfortunate. Let me try again here with headbutt. Let's see if we can get through this confusion. Come on, Aya. There we go. Get through with that headbutt. And we got him. 54 experience. Very nice. Take that, bug catcher salad. Woo, good stuff. I'll probably be doing this a few times, but yeah, I'm gonna go back to heal. I did my best. I have no regrets. Come on, Aya. Nugget Bridge is your time to shine. And considering you're a shiny Pokemon, you should be pretty good at that. So our next trainer is right here. It's going to be Lass Alley. Once again, just one Pokemon. And it's going to be Psyduck. Now, Psyduck, as we've seen before, is a Water-type Pokemon. So that will be weak to Grass-type, which means it's time to go and use Absorb, which we just learned today. So let's go and get that popping. Now, because it's going to do extra damage, we're also going to be healing a lot. And because we resist his Water Gun, basically we're just going to heal up all of the damage they do to us. So this is part of why Aya is so amazing. We can heal a lot of damage very easily here. So he'll go for Scratch. Not going to do very much. And it's almost like the battle never happened because we're just going to heal all of that back up. 
There we go. Down goes Psyduck. How could I lose? Now, last alley, you lost, but do you have any regrets? I did my best, so I've got no regrets. Okay, well, let's go fight this kid then. Here's number three. I won't be easy. If after this, we've got two more trainers to get our prize. So we'll see what we get for that. So let's go fight Youngster Timmy with one Pokemon. And this guy's got a Sandshrew. Now, Sandshrew is a Ground-type Pokemon. Ground-type is also weak to grass. So once again, I, uh, it's their time to shine. And there they go shining. So same as against Psyduck, I'm just going to go for Absorb. And I'm just going to use that over and over again until we win. And in this case, we're actually faster as well. So they're only going to get to hit us once. They do get Poison Sting. Please do not actually poison me. Okay, we're good. So no poison. And we should heal up most, if not all, of that damage. So let's see how much we heal here. And we're back up to 30. It would have healed a bit more, but he just didn't have enough HP. Uh, all the, the overkilling you do does not actually heal them. Just the actual HP you take heals. So because he was almost defeated already, yeah, we didn't heal that much from it. But Youngster Timmy, do you have any regrets? I did my best. I have no regrets. Okay, Youngster Timmy. Well, let's go fight another last right here. I'm number four, getting tired. I would hate to be the second guy on the bridge having to tell everyone he's number two all day because people are just going to make poop jokes the whole time. So here we've got Meowth. Meowth is a pure normal type Pokemon, so we can't be super effective, but that's okay. We can still go and do our good old, our good old strats here. Now, one thing that Meowth is going to do is use Bite, which will flinch us. So I want to go for Stun Spore so that we get to go first so that we don't have to worry about flinch. Of course, we have to actually get past the flinch and actually hit our Stun Spore. Gosh dang it, dude. Do not flinch me. Come on. Oh, we got flinched. This is what I was worried about. So we have to get this Stun Spore on, otherwise this is going to be the danger. Come on. Oh my gosh, we missed again? Okay, game. Okay. Don't die. Oh, down to two. We got the Stun Spore here. So now we kind of need to rely on Absorb to heal us. But I think we took so much damage... I hate to do it, guys, but I think we're going to have to use another item. We just got so unlucky right there. So we could go for our headbutt to flinch them ourselves. Oh, we got lucky they got stuck and couldn't move. Or we could go for absorb to try to heal. I think because we just used a potion, I'll go and use headbutt to try to get our own flinch. This is what some people will call flinch... What do they call it? Para flinching? <laughs> it's like paralyzing and flinching at the same time. They get a critical. Are you kidding me, dude? And it looks like headbutt would have just two shot, so I probably should have just done that to begin with. Oh well. I was just so focused on not getting flinched by them that I probably didn't do the best plan, but oh well. We do get level 11. Very nice. Last Rally goes down. I lost too. Now, Last Rally, you did lose, but do you have any regrets? I did my best, so I have no regrets! I need to go heal. My regret is not using Headbutt sooner. If number one is PP and number two is Poo Poo, then what the heck is three, four, and five? Well, speaking of fives, let's go and actually battle them here. Okay, I'm number five. I'll stomp you! Okay. Now, number five, unfortunately, is not going to be a great battle for Aya. We've got Camper Kevin, one Pokemon here, and it's going to be a Growlithe. Now, Growlithe is another Pokemon we haven't seen before, and they are a fire type. So, basically, they're going to use a fire type attack and one uh, kill us in one blow. I don't want that. So, instead, I'm going to go switch over to Freya. Now, very conveniently, Freya has a water type attack, so we can just go defeat him in one shot ourselves. And I don't suspect his fire attack will do very much to Freya. What? He went for bite? Why the crud did he go for that? Normally he would go for ember, which is a fire attack, but okay, we're gonna go for bouncy bubble. And we should take this guy down, no problem. And of course, bouncy bubble will heal us up as well, so once again, it's like the battle just never even happened. Whoa, too much! Now, Camper Kevin, you said you'd stop me and you didn't. Do you have any regrets? I did my best. I have no regrets. All right, well, we beat the five trainers, so where's our prize? Do we have to talk to this guy? Congratulations, you beat our five trainers. You just earned a fabulous prize, and we get a nugget. So, nugget bridge, it gives you a nugget. There's a Psyduck up there. I spent 15 minutes looking for you, you crud. But yeah, we get the nugget. We already know we could sell that for 5,000 Poké Dollars. By the way, kid, how would you like to join Team Rocket? That sounds great. I would love to join. That's right. Oh, okay, suddenly, buttheads. We're a group dedicated to doing evil using Pokémon. Want to join? Yes! Yes, please. I would love to join. Are you sure? Yes, definitely sure. Come on, join. I'm trying. Let me in. I'm telling you to join. Okay, you need convincing. I don't need convincing. I want to join. I think it would actually be kind of cool if they actually did let you join there, but they don't. You can't join. So we got Team Rocket Grunt, and their first Pokemon is going to be a Zubat. Now, Zubat, as we've seen before, has flying type attacks. We do not want that on Aya, so we're going to have to do a little swapping here. I might be able to defeat them if I get lucky, but I don't think I want to risk it. So let's go ahead and swap to Freya here, and we'll go use our Buzzy Buzz. They go for Bite? What the crud? 
Okay, we fight Growlithe, the fire type. Fire destroys Paris, and they go for bite. We fight Zubat, it's got a flying type attack, which would destroy Paris, they go for bite. Maybe I shouldn't swap, maybe they're just always gonna use bite. I don't know, man, but down goes Zubat. Their next Pokemon is going to be another Pokemon we've seen before, which is going to be a Coughing. Coughing is a pure poison type Pokemon, and I might be able to deal with it if we go for Stun Spore and Headbutt. I'm gonna try, but if I gotta swap, I will, because they will be super effective with their poison type attacks. And also, Coughing has quite a lot of defense, so Headbutt probably won't do that much, but let's just give it a shot. We're actually faster, so Stun Spore, I guess we didn't really need it, but we'll go for it anyways here. And let's see what they go for. They go for Smog, so that's gonna poison me here. So poison, and it's a lot of damage. That's not good. I think we're gonna... Uh, we're gonna have to swap. We might get lucky and he might get stuck in paralysis, but if he doesn't, we're dead. So I, I was planning to swap on coughing anyways. We at least got the paralyze, I guess. Oh, wow. There we go, guys. The power of love. He went for smog on Freya, but because our happiness is so high, well, that was not a problem. I'm gonna go for some sizzly slide here. Actually, sizzly slide's not that great because they already are paralyzed, so I can't burn them as well. So I should actually be going for... Um, Bouncy Bubble, because that can still heal me. Or just Headbutt. <laughs> just Headbutt would do the most damage, I think. Uh, but we got him. So down goes Coughing, and we'll heal up some damage right there as well. In fact, we're going to heal all of that damage. And that's it. We've defeated yet another Team Rocket Grunt. Arg, You are good? I don't know if I'm good or if you're just bad, but we got him. With your skills, you could become a top leader in Team Rocket. Come on, think of the opportunity. You shouldn't let a chance like this pass you by. And he will just vanish. I guess he has regrets. We're at the end of Nugget Bridge, and we're going to go ahead and wrap things up here for today. We'll come back next time, and if you look at the top left of your screen, you can probably get a little hint of what's going to happen in the next episode. We're also going to be doing the gym battle in the next episode as well. So, I will see you guys then. Take care!